Generic greetings and welcome back once again to Prison Architect. Today's beverages. A very delicious ruby breakfast. Very nice indeed. So welcome back to Prison Architect and the Extreme Testing Initiative. This is the episode where we put the prison through its paces by inducing certain events and behaviours that may or may not occur naturally during the game. And what I mean by that is we're going to have the prisoners say all riot, all fight, all want to get out the front door, or even all somehow be armed with weapons and see what they do and that gives us an idea of what would happen in the extreme scenarios that we <laughs> inject into this level and also how we will fare so will the guards be able to handle it and will the will the prisoners do something that's unexpected and expose weaknesses in the facility we shall find out let's go over to staffing here and i have a mod where we can do instant riot jailbreak fighting etc and what would happen if they all started rioting well 90 prisoners Prisoners are now writing. I've paused it for a moment. We can see that there will be, yes, indeed, a lot of fighting there. So, obviously, writing. They will revert to certain behaviours, whether it be violence, taking over areas, etc. So let's see, the laundry is getting taken over. We have a guard up here that is getting injured. You notice I'm not doing, I'm not intervening in any way. I'm just letting it run to see how this, uh, see how this works. We can see that one, two of the cell blocks are being taken over by the, by the different gang members and such. We have our sniper here who is, yeah, targeting different people. I think we'll go for free fire all sectors just to give the sniper a little bit more bite, shall we say. We also have an arm guard here who is uh, currently being injured and yet yeah, they are not taking any nonsense, that's for sure. Canteen in the middle is being taken over. Um, oh, as, as is the as is the library for some reason. It looks like Shadow Wolf, White, and Kivel are running around there. We've got the first two armed with, seems to be, oh, we've got a pair of scissors and two fountain pens. So that's happened. We have the right at the bottom. It's actually been stopped. It's, uh, it hasn't been taken over. So that's interesting. We still have this huge pile of, well, <laughs> different, different body parts, I think. We've got lots of people unconscious. And lots of people are still fighting over here, trying to get through that remote door. I haven't done a lockdown or a bang up or anything like that. We're just seeing how this would fare. And as far as I can tell, it's faring actually fairly well. We've had about 14 deaths, but... No, there's 15 there. But we haven't had anyone trying to break out. We haven't had anyone trying to break through. Oh no, we have had some. So we've got a couple of prisoners here that have probably barged their way through this area and they've managed to get into the main central facility. This is all staff only there. And they most likely have been going for, going for this armory here. And I think they must have come from there, from that staff door and indeed, yeah, from the psychologist office. So they've broken over one, broken uh, up, should I say, one, two, three, four staff doors. So that's how they've got into here. We we did mark that as a bit of a weak point. And we can see, yeah, it's happened here. We've got also Alex uh, Nubati who <laughs> has swapped their set of keys for a baton and who is now damaging the visitor door. I would have thought the keys would have been <laughs> a bit more, yeah, a, a, bit, a bit more useful on that front. Let me just go to guard response and one, two, three, four, five, six. That should do us for now and see if we can take over or back over the northern part of the northern part of the facility obviously a lot of the guards are already stationed sort of semi remotely like in this security room and in this security room and yeah they're also locked in the corridors as well because i don't think we've got no we don't have anyone who is currently on this door control system i'll move them over so we won't get our cctv in operation but at least the doors will now function so we've got that going for us which is nice and I think there's only three places to take over now. We've got, or take back over, it's this area, which you can see the people are still fighting. They're smashing open the jail doors, they are getting shot, and also tased on the bottom right there. Lots of dogs charging into James Nightingale here. And only five more prisoners still rioting. We've now taken back over this area. Gonna go to guard response, one, two, and then, oh, there's also uh, him in here as well. New is trying to break into the visitor area. <laughs> we can see that 
these areas where we have security rooms, the armed guards and snipers and such, and just general guards in general, yeah, I guess, they will oh, very much uh, just hang around there. So even though we haven't stationed anybody in these security rooms, because they are so close, it does provide us with a bit of security. And that is that bit there. So that was doing a riot, and quite frankly, it was about what I expected, although I did expect more fatalities and certainly more takeover. I would have thought that all of these cell blocks would have been taken over, but I guess it was the, I guess it was the time of day. There was a lot of people out here, so if it was, say, uh, at night and they were all in these cell blocks, that probably would have been taken over and the rest of it would have been, would have been left alone. But yeah, there you go. So we now we know that if we did have a massive riot, basically not much extra would happen from what the, what we've seen in the series where we've had a couple of riots, mainly because of the canteens and such before we changed it. But yeah, it's an interesting behaviour there. Okay, what we'll do is we will load the same save back up and this time we'll do probably an instant fight. I expect that to go pretty much like this, but with more fatalities. But let's see how that goes. Okay, so loaded up the same save file. The time may be slightly different, but it's not too much of an issue. And we're going to do a bit of fighting here. A bit of the old ultraviolence, as some could say. And I expect, as I said, whoa! <laughs> Interesting to see there. Let's go straight away for free fire. You can see all of the cameras indicating that we've got, yeah, lots of misbehavior. So because it's a slightly different time, it's work slash lock up here. A lot of the prisoners are in their cells so they're just going to start fighting and breaking things apart a lot of destruction here and that's brought on also a riot only up to 14 uh, now back to 13 12 yeah that's slowly going down lots of people who are just randomly fighting in the laundry it looks like we've got uh, paul mccauley here who's got a set of keys and is heading towards the i'm guessing the front door yeah Right, honestly, we've tried to escape from this facility already, and I can pretty much guarantee one person will not get very far. Although Macaulay did take two or three tasers there, followed by a shotgun blast, so... Yeah, they are tough. That's, that's indeed correct. We can see a lot of damage being... Yeah. Being perpetrated. Look at that state of this. They've just smashed up anything that they possibly can. Uh, looks like we've got... Aston Robinson here, who is um, not being overly kind to to Stanley here, and we have now 20 deaths. That's a bit more than we've seen previous. We've got Coombs and Newell here, who's just breaking stuff. But the riot's still going up, so the riot started as not a lot, and now it is obviously going up. So what I'll do is go guard response, and I'll bring some guards in here because we do want to try and stop all of that fighting there. We've got this being taken over as well, so there's a very, very brave worker there. Go on, Greg. Well done there, mate. Repairing the pool table just so it can be smashed up again for, for profit. Nice. Anyway, we have 26 still fighting. Lots of leaks when it comes to water, that's for sure. And technically, this has been taken over by uh, Adam Newell and Tom Coombs here. And also, absolute carnage around here. Utter carnage. Wonder what we're down in terms of gangs then. Nine members of the Vipers, 21 Bone Breakers, and one Jackal. To be expected. Okay, so again, not any overly surprising behaviour. And I don't know why all of them would decide to fight at once, but I genuinely thought there'd be a lot more, a lot more fatalities. I mean, there's probably still going to be some more, but at the moment, they're just trying to break open this and get out. I don't know if they've given up on that one. See, they're trying to break through this remote door, and then they've just given up on that. You'd think they'd break open the staff door here and get the way out, but no, they're just fighting, I guess. That's the whole point. They are just fighting. They're not trying to escape. However, let's see what happens if they would try to escape, and <laughs> the instant jailbreak was to happen. Once again loaded up and we could make some extra money if we added a death row to the prison. Thanks tips. So let's go over to staff and to the instant jailbreak. This is the one I'm most interested in because I want to see exactly what they're going to do. I'm guessing charging straight through here and out 
but let's just activate that and everybody is now yep they are charging out of their cells if they are in their cells because it is work slash lock up they are breaking out of it and they are all charging probably through the middle here lots and lots of guards have been moved around let me go for one second free fire there again not telling any guards to go anywhere i'm not putting this on a bang up um or a lockdown a lot of people say oh yeah use lockdown straight away and that's that's a good that's a good set of advice that's a good piece of advice and the reason i'm not doing it is because our guards need to get places and if you do a lockdown like that what happens is the guards can't get through their own doors so it's a bit garbage <laughs> quite frankly but it can be useful it is a useful useful tool um okay so this is why I was excited by this one specifically, the jailbreak. So, this is to be expected. The people around here that are in their cells, they're just breaking up, just breaking out the jail doors, and now we're going to try and run out. It's also when it works slash free time now, so the cells have opened up. So, these are going to be rushing through. But we can see that we've had some people come through this canteen. There's a couple of doors here that are locked up, and we can lock those if we wanted to, to slow this down. That's why they were there. Um, but what is also of note is that one, two, three of these doors have been smashed open. This is in the shop, the chapel, uh, and also in the library, and they're now coming down through the centre here. In the escape, we went from this area, I think it was from, like, the laundry or something but we came, we came through there and we can see everybody is now meeting right in the middle so this is the main sort of central meeting hub where visitors come in everybody has to come through this central section here unless they go around this outside bit but you've still got security rooms to get to so it looks like about half the facility has yeah come into this central corridor and has been stopped however we also have a second wave coming and this is because oh yeah there we go a lot of them have broken out from the from the laundry that were there and also a lot of them have now come from their cells and are charging through the center oh dear that's um yeah that's that's happened and again haven't issued any special orders other than putting on free fire haven't issued any lockdowns haven't said about guard responses haven't brought in any emergency services such as uh, the armed guards and such uh, what we could we bring in we could bring in paramedics riot police and fire engines haven't done any of that we are just seeing what's happening here and yeah that's pretty much it stopped oh we got to do have a riot where is the riot going to be it'll be probably in one of the cells that guy's writing he's no longer writing he's also no longer holding a rope or taking any breaths uh, I'm not too sure where the riot's happening. Oh, the riot's, the riot's over here, is it? Yeah, I wouldn't come out that door if I was you. <laughs> it's just a, a very ominous laser line coming from the guard tower, and I don't think that's a marker light. Anyway, let's put a pin in this one. We've seen what's happened. Again, very secure. I thought they would have got a bit further. My concern was that it would just all of the prisoners charging out would come straight through here. Now, would it be different if they were all in the canteen? Maybe. Maybe we'll probably get further. But I don't think it'll be much further. They've still got one, two, three sets of doors to get through. Plus all of the staffing that was around here. So it wouldn't be very, very different. Look at all these staff that are trying to get through there into here. Just because, yeah, the door control systems are not staffed. Yay. So, yeah, more security. We could add in a road gate and a road barrier with another perimeter wall around this bit on the right-hand side. That would add additional security. But realistically, if you've got through here, this large jail door, and you are in this area, in my experience, the road gate and the barrier are useful tools. But, like I say, if you've got to this point, you've already went past and probably subdued anyone that can stop and follow you anywhere. <laughs> so... That is the escape one. Interesting. Um, glad to see the prison fared pretty well. All right, let's do something that's just utterly ridiculous. And what I mean by that is we will <laughs> give every single prisoner some sort of weapon. So we've got uh, drills. We've got, that looks to be some sort of, that's an assault rifle. 
that's a shotgun. We've got a club, a lighter. Yeah, they've got the short end of the stick on this one. Shotguns, got a sniper rifle, more drills. We've got a handgun there, clubs. Yeah, so we've they've been given all of this. And what are they going to do with it? Oh, there's a... What's that? Some sort of... Oh, it says escaping. So they are trying to escape. Yeah, so we've got all of this stuff on them. And that's some sort of SMG, I think. So we will unpause it and let's see what they're going to do. It says escaping. So let's just put, obviously, free fire on there. Not going to do any guard responses. Not going to tell them to do anything in particular. So previously, we've told them to fight, to riot, and to escape. This one, they've just been given weapons. And it's up to them what they do with that. And by the look of it, they're using these tools of military grade uh, to try and go out the front door by the look of it. Some of them are obviously leaving their cell blocks. We are once again meeting in the middle there. Maybe they just want a nice cup of coffee from that machine or play on the retro arcade cabinet. Who knows? But uh, yeah, there's actually less fatalities at this stage than I thought there would be. We can see that all of these inmates are trying to charge through here. Warthouse successfully doing that. Christopher Waterhouse here charging through the middle and down managing to get straight into here and also through these doors because this one was open. So we might see an escape here from Waterhouse. Again, not telling the guards to do anything special. We have him trying to break through. We have a lot of these guys are no longer armed. I'm guessing that the snipers have done an absolute number on all of these, because if they charge out, they're having to come this way. Uh, this is an interesting one. We've got some people from the southern cell block here who are trying to break through this remote door. And obviously, that remote door is... Remote doors are the strongest of all the doors. So it does take some time to get through there. We have a lot of people who've been stopped in the centre. Again, in the middle, which is to be expected. These guys have given up. That guy's just wandering around... <laughs> Wondering what's happened. <laughs> um, a lot of, a lot of violence around here. Look at all the weapons. You got batons and machine guns, pistols, drills, rope. Yeah, that's a short end. No fires though. None of them set fire to anything. We've got Adam Newell here who's trying to break into the chapel. And I don't know where our other protective custody inmate is. Also, I haven't really been looking at any of these guys. Uh, we've got. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Mikey Brand here, who is armed. Interesting, they're armed, but they weren't fighting, and as soon as the doctors were obviously trying to heal them, as soon as they'd done that, they've just surrendered the weapon. I don't know what that was all about. And I think that's it. That is very surprising indeed. I expected them to obviously use these weapons to do something, whether it be fight or riot or escape. Now, bear in mind that this is this mod is of some age, and with the new gang's DLC stuff, it might have slightly different behaviours. So, for example, our gangs, which is the Vipers, the Bone Breakers, and the Jackals, they have different goals. So, narcotics, destruction, and I can't remember what the uh, the jackals were, but either way, they didn't seem to do any of that. It was just, let's just get out. So maybe that's the mod thing. But was it successful? No, not one person during all of these tests escaped. The only people that got close were Christopher Waterhouse and Stephen Keevil, who got to the reception. And the still visitors coming in. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, so they're the only ones that got close. And that is without us managing it. We could have done some lockdowns. We could have put in... There's a notebook page there. We could have put in some more guards stationed here. We could have done guard responses. We could have called in some riot police and paramedics. Lots we could have done, but we didn't need to. Which basically means that, yeah, what we sort of experienced in the escape mode, this is, this is a very secure facility. And indeed, going... Going big going home on the remote doors was a decent security decision. It costs money, it's sort of a nightmare to manage and to wire up and 
yeah, when no one's staffing one particular one, it sort of breaks down. And there are a lot of flaws to it. But big positive is you get a secure facility. <laughs> Either way, we are going to call it there for now. That's been a bit of Prison Architect, the Extreme Testing Initiative. And results are good. Is there anything we can improve? Yes, of course. There's always things you can improve in these builds. But notably, road gate and a road barrier with a bit of perimeter wall around there would finally sort of seal that off and make that overly secure. If you want to see, if you want to see that, then let me know. I'm, I'm sort of happy leaving it here. I don't don't think we need an extra build episode just to finish that bit off but yeah if there's any big change you'd like to see any improvements by all means let me know in the comments and if nothing else hopefully this has been somewhat of an entertaining slash informative uh look at the oh at the build and that's that's a bit of a backlog in the infirmary as to be expected hmm either way hope you have enjoyed it thanks very much for watching comments in the comments take care and generic partings